Um, so hi everyone. Um, my name is Axel Jean from the University of La Rochelle in France. Um, I'm a research engineer working on the Newsite project for three years now, and we'll be talking uh, with Jean-Philippe Moreau uh, from the National Library of France today um, about the use of IIIF in uh, the Newsite project. Next slide, please, Jean-Philippe. Thanks. Um, so the Newsai project is a Horizon 2020 project, um, which started three years ago. Um, and uh, the objective of this project is uh, to create tools and help um, digital humanists uh, to analyze both in a qualitative and in a quantitative way, um, a large mass of newspaper data. Um, the project website uh, is available at uh, www.newsi.eu and the demonstrator um, basically uh, gathering all the outputs of the project uh, is available at platform.newsi.eu. Uh, so please feel free to, to check this out. Uh, next slide, please. Jean yeah. So the, this Newsi project, um, there is eight partners in four countries. So France, Germany, Austria and Finland. And uh, on the, the right hand side of the slide, you can see the, the, the main uh, workflow of our project. Um, so you, 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 you should start reading it from the bottom. Uh, so we start with digitized newspapers that were, um, that were given to us by uh, three national libraries. So the National Library of France, Austria, and Finland. Uh, we selected a set of um, about 180,000 issues, so which represents about 1.5 million pages. And the objective is to try and uh, create new algorithms to extract information from these newspapers, uh, create tools to analyze them, and of course, create a user interface for users to be able to use those tools. Uh, so starting from the bottom, uh, we, we started with uh, text recognition and article separation. From there, we try to uh, enrich semantically uh, the, these data um, by uh, trying to identify named entities, uh, trying to identify the stance of, the, of those entities, and trying to link them to knowledge bases. This, all this information uh, is uh, gathered in a, 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 a database, basically. And from there, we have uh, two more uh, basically steps of creating tools. The first one is um, trying to identify uh, topic model, try to create topic models uh, uh, on those data, uh, trying to ident identify trends and so on. Uh, and from there, there is uh, the team in Helsinki is in charge of developing a personal research assistant, which goal is to help users um, automatically um, identify interesting facts about a collection of documents uh, or, or trying to identify trends in this collection and so on. And, all those tools are, can be um, seen and used through the user interface, uh, which is available at uh, platform.newsi.eu. So next slide, please, Jean-Philippe. Yeah, thanks. So this is uh, an overview of uh, the, the, the demonstrator. So this is a digital uh, library-like website um, that I guess we are all kind of familiar with. So you have a text search in which you can enter keywords to uh, express your queries. Uh, the system will uh, return a list of documents that can then be filtered again um, with different metadata, uh, the language, the newspapers, the documents come from, uh, also the named entities that are uh, available in those uh, return documents. And uh, when you click on a, a result, you are then uh, sent to the a show page of these documents. Jean-Philippe, yeah, next slide, please. So this is the show page basically of uh, one article. You can see that uh, all the issue is presented in the viewer, but the article is highlighted and you have more information of, 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 about this article. So you can get the, uh, the automatically extracted text. Uh, you have a list of metadata and the named entities um, that are available in this particular article. So next slide, please. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so IIIF was uh, really something that was very interesting for us because it's a nice way to, uh, at the same time, integrate uh, images from national libraries, but also to uh, export new data, uh, so using IIIF. 
Um, and so in the NewsEye project, we used IIIF as a consumer for the different thumbnails in the research results, uh, but also the viewer on the main show page. Uh, all the images are, sto are stored on the national library's um, servers, basically, uh, which allows for easy, easy integration, basically, uh, of those documents. Uh, but we also use IIIF as a producer um, in several sense. So the first one is that uh, the National Library of Finland uh, does not have the capacity to create a IIIF server now. Uh, so for everything to be uh, on the same page, basically, uh, we also uh, created a IIIF server to uh, publish the, the images from the National Library of Finland. But more than that, uh, we use IIIF to also export the different uh, articles that were automatically uh, exported, uh, extracted from the newspapers, uh, and also the named entities that we uh, were able to identify. And we decided because there is not a lot of um, there is not a lot of uh, of norm about how to share um, different kind of metadata like named entities and so on using IIIF, um, as far as I know. So right now we just use uh, tags in the presentation API um, to publish these named entities. And I think I will give you the floor, Jean-Philippe. Thank, thank you, Axel. Uh, yeah, so as Axel just explained to us, um, the underwent use of IIIF foster the reuse of data. And to our opinion, institution can disseminate more of the data. Uh, researchers can share annotation and transcription and institution may even wish to benefit from, from the work of researcher using um, IIIF representation API as an exchange format. Uh, it's uh, the orange arrow in, in, in the diagram. IIIF collection are also a very powerful tool. Um, within the project, national or thematic corpora have been described as IIIF collection, which can be browsed in any IIIF viewer. The same data can be accessed for calculation purposes or reused as dumps or, or data set. The slide shows the French data set as a collection open in Mirador 3. Um, as, as an example, this way, anyone can have instant access to, to, the, to the content. Uh, I'm showing uh, the Marie Claire magazine, um, this issue as an example. Uh, so it's instant access. For researcher, uh, the same is true. Um, researcher data set can be exported from the demonstrator as complete relief collection. It's still a, a work in progress, but each data set will include two layers of notation, one for the world issue content, another one for the articles part of a specific research uh, data set. Now, uh, let's start the last part of our presentation on storytelling for digital humanities. Um, we can say that showcasing digital collection is always a challenge for any researcher who wish to publicize results to the general public. Within the project, Digital Humanities Group has produced content to present the work done with the tools developed by the scientists computer scientist, um, screen case, notebooks, uh, case study description, Twitter threads, blog posts have been created for different purposes and different user groups. If blog posts are very useful for popularizing research results, the heritage documents they contain are generally only used to complement the text. First, to highlight digital collection, storytelling tools can be a wise option. There are a couple of image annotation and publication tools um, already developed, such as Tories or Tessel. They allow commenting on specific part of digitized content to produce a dynamic and interactive analysis. Among these tools, we have chosen to present Exhibit, uh, which is a triple F storytelling tool developed by Ninosin currently in beta testing and built on top of uh, Universal Viewer. For this presentation, we have selected a narration from a blog post produced by Najma Omari 
for the project and which is part of a series of article uh, making the link, the connection between the media treatment of the coronavirus crisis and 100 years earlier that of uh, the Spanish flu. So let's try to open the story. Yes. This connections and, and links between the old and contemporary press um, make it possible to arouse the interest of the public who have been able to discover the digital collection of, of the BNF. Um, this post got two, uh, 2,000 retweets and more than 3,000 likes. Um, among the topics we, we covered from uh, vaccination to um, to wearing a mask and so on. We were interested in remedies and drugs uh, claiming to work miracles against the flu, uh, like uh, kinin. Not sure you are seeing anything right now. Yes. In 2020, uh, several scientists have also argued that chloroquine can cure COVID. Um, direct links to the demonstrator can enrich uh, the story, obviously, like this one targeting a uh, Lomata issue from uh, 1918. Many advertisements uh, in the daily newspaper were about the merit of drugs, old-fashioned remedies, and therapeutic cures. Uh, this include pink pills or grip cure, literally the, the flu cure, promising recovery in, in record time. Um, accordingly, brands, some brands really disguised the ads at short stories, beside which they printed medium portraits in an effort to lend more credibility to a claim. On this slide, uh, we have linked our story to a Gallica proof of concept on content-based image retrieval named Gallica Pix, using a request in a newspaper illustrated ads database. This, by the way, this, this mosaic is also triple driven. And as you can see, we, we get hundreds of illustration and, and portraits. So let's go back to our presentation now. Okay. And of course, our topics can be addressed and, and have been addressed during, during the, the project. Uh, for example, we had conducted the gender case studies uh, on women's rights, in particular through the press of uh, previous centuries, uh, the right to wear pins, pants, to, to vote or to practice journalism for women, uh, all topics of interest. Uh, the story of the right to abortion, obviously can also be told with the uh, same uh, storytelling tool uh, exhibit. And using, uh, again, uh, illustrated French newspapers or, or weekly mails uh, and newspapers. Finally, the, the tool is also very well suited to uh, explain the, the operation on the 19th century press, its organization, or the layout of newspaper. Uh, it allows users to explore the media in an interactive and, and very natural way. Um, just to show you the our last exhibit uh, story. Um, a typical newspaper layout um, using Again, panning and zooming um, followed by exhibit or stories or any other story storytelling tool. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you again for, for listening. I think we have plenty of room for yep. question. Yeah. So um, the first question um, that we have in Hoover 
is what annotation motivation do you use for this is an article annotation annotations that's a good question uh, i should take a look at that um i'm not sure to be able to answer right now um, uh, but you have some ideas jean philippe uh, I, I can't remember yeah um, i'm sorry i can't remember either um we, i think we have to check <laughs> Yeah, I would yeah. like to check. I'm sorry. Are there any other questions from uh, the attendees? I'll give folks uh, time to type. And also if you just, I, I believe the attendees have the ability to unmute yourself. So if you wanna unmute and ask, that's fine. Okay, we have one other question. Um, when you tag an agent in the text, is there an authority file or is it just the media fragment of the canvas? No, it's just the media fragment of the canvas. There is no authority file. We, we did not attempt to, uh, to, to make uh, entity uh, name entity uh, linking during this, uh, this project. All right, any other questions from folks? You have one comment uh, that says, thank you. This has been really interesting. Just wanted to share in case you don't have that up. All right, great. So it looks like there aren't any more questions. Um, so thank you both for presenting. This was really fascinating. And thank you for everyone for attending. Uh, just a reminder that uh, we have recorded this and we will send it out in the weeks after the conference. Uh, so thanks all. Um, and we will see you at other sessions. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Bye. Bye.